Hi, my name is Christian Waldegrave, Head of Research at TK, and this is our Tanker Market Update for September 2017. Well, as we come towards the end of the third quarter, I think it's been one of the worst third quarters for tanker rates that we've seen in, in, a, in a few years, probably since the 2011 to 2013 period. Uh, especially during August and the early part of September, we've seen rates really across the board below $10,000 per day. And as we've said in previous videos, um, there's really two ma main causes for the low tanker rates at the moment. It's tanker fleet growth and OPEC supply cuts. Starting with the fleet growth, the tanker fleet has grown by about 4% since the start of the year. And year on year, the tanker fleet's about 6% higher. But that really masks some differences between the product and the crude segments. Uh, the product sector hasn't grown so much, but we have seen a lot of growth on the crude sectors, particularly the big crude tankers. Um, and so the VLTC fleet is actually about 7% higher year on year, and the Suez Max fleet is about 10% higher. So that's a lot of ships for the market to absorb. And then at the same time, we've obviously had the OPEC supply cuts, which has impacted on demand. And through the first half of the year, I think what happened was OPEC cut production, but they were selling a lot of oil out of inventories to supplement their exports. What we've seen more recently is that they have actually started cutting exports. Saudi Arabia, for example, has said that they're going to limit exports to 6.6 .6 million bar barrels per day. Now, in the first half of the year, they were exporting closer to 72 and at the end of last year, they were exporting 7.6. So they have cut about a million barrels a day now off exports, and that's really having a big impact. We're seeing far fewer cargoes coming out of the Middle East Gulf, uh, which is having a big negative impact on the VLCCs, which then cascades down because the VLCCs compete with the Suez Maxes, and the Suez Maxes compete with the Afro Maxes. So it really puts pressure on the whole, whole system. So that's really the reason that we've had these very low rates. But we have had a little bit of, bit of volatility in the past two or three weeks just off some of the hurricane activity in the U.S. Gulf. It's been a very active uh, hurricane season. We've already seen 11 named storms in the Atlantic. And two of those in particular have been quite devastating. Uh, Hurricane Harvey, which passed through the U.S. Gulf and up through Texas and Louisiana at the end of August. And then just in the last few days, Hurricane Irma, which went up through the Caribbean and into Florida. Of course, first and foremost, these are human tragedies, and our sympathies go out to those that are affected by the storms. Uh, but they've also had a big impact on oil infrastructure, particularly Hurricane Harvey, which went, went right through the U.S. Gulf. Uh, and at the peak of the, of the hurricane there, about 4 million barrels a day of U.S. refining capacity was offline, as well as about 800,000 barrels a day of U.S. oil production. And we also saw lots of ports being closed, like Houston and uh, Corpus Christi. So that caused a lot of disruption, and we saw a, uh, a bit of a spike in rates, particularly on MR product tankers and on Aframaxes in the Caribbean. And on the product tankers, that's because the U.S. is obviously a big supplier and a big exporter of refined products. So when those refineries went down in America, other refineries in places like Europe and Asia had to increase their exports uh, in order to make up for the shortfall from the U.S., and for the Aframax in the Caribbean, it was really just a matter of uh, ships getting caught in, in port, not being able to discharge, and therefore tightening the available uh, fleet supply in the region. So that pushed up rates on MRs and, and, and Aframax in the Caribbean to about $20,000 per day. But they have already started to come back down. And I think um, as far as oil infrastructure goes, it doesn't look like there'll be too much lasting damage from the hurricanes um, like there was back in 2005 with Katrina and Rita. So those refineries are coming back online now, and some of the oil production is coming online, and the ports are reopening. So probably uh, you know, we won't see too much long-term impacts there. But one of the knock-on impacts that is quite interesting from that is that it's really pushed up refining margins in other parts of the world. Because as I said, when the US refineries were knocked out, these other refineries had to step up and supply the product. And particularly in Asia, we've seen that Asian refining margins are at a two-year high. Um, so the Asian refineries are really looking to ramp up throughput. And as I said previously, this, the Middle East has cut production. So Asian refinery, refineries are going to have to increasingly look to the Atlantic for that supply, particularly as uh, the ports reopen from the United States. Because another impact of the hurricanes has been that it's pushed down the price of U.S. crude relative to other crudes. In fact, that Brent WTI spread is now at about $6. So U.S. crude is very attractively priced. The Asian refineries have very high margins at the moment, so we really can see that there's going to be a big pull of U.S. crude across to Asia in the next month or two, uh, which should be good for tanker ton mile demand uh, because it's a long-haul route, obviously, from the U.S. through to Asia. 
So that might give a little bit of support to rates in the next month or two as we're really in that shoulder season between Q3 and Q4. And then we usually do get a bump in rates during the winter months. In general, though, I think over the next few months, uh, despite the seasonality, I think rates will generally remain fairly low while we do have this big oversupply of ships. However, as we've said in previous videos, we do think that a recovery will come starting second half of 2018. And that's really due to two reasons. On the demand side, I think that um, at some point, the OPEC cuts will have run their course and inventories will have been brought down to the point where OPEC can reopen the taps again. Now, at the moment, they're pledging their cuts through to March of 2018. There is some talk of them extending that by about three months. But we certainly think, looking at our uh, projections on oil supply and oil demand, that probably sometime in the first half of, of next year, OPEC cuts will have made an impact and oil inventories will have come down uh, substantially. And as long as oil demand keeps rising, that means that in the second half of next year, OPEC will probably have to start increasing production again to meet that demand. So that'll mean more cargoes. And then on the supply side, we do think that tanker supply will come down next year as the order book rolls off. And more importantly, we are seeing scrapping starting to rise now. Um, scrapping's been very low for the past two or three years. Uh, but in the last couple of months, we've definitely seen an uptick. In fact, in August, we saw two and a half million deadweight of ships scrapped, which is more than we saw in the whole of 2016. And in fact, is the most in a calendar month since March of 2010. And so during August, actually, it was quite interesting. We actually saw a slight shrinkage in the, in the crewed fleet. Uh, we saw a net decrease in the VLCC and the Aframax fleet of about two ships each. So that's really going to make a big impact going forward if we, still, if we continue to see these levels of scrapping. And I think we will see scrapping continuing because of these freight rates and with scrap prices being pretty attractive at about $400 a ton, I think a lot more owners will make the decision to scrap ships rather than putting them through 17 and a half year intermediate survey or through fourth special survey. So that combination of lower deliveries as we go into next year with higher scrapping means that the tank of fleet growth will be much lower, probably 2 to 3% next year, and then as low as 1 to 2% in 2019. So we do feel confident that we're going to have a, a, a weak period over the next few months, but as we get to later into 2018, particularly into the second half, we will start seeing a recovery in, in tanker rates that will strengthen into 2019. So that's our update on the conventional tanker market, and we'll talk to you again next month. Thank <laughs> you.